A gleaming passenger aircraft emerges from a Chinese manufacturing facility. The C919, China's direct challenge to the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. It's sleek, contemporary, and equipped with some of the world's most sophisticated aviation components. The engines? Well, they're co-developed by General Electric and Francis Safran, the avionic systems. Honeywell, landing gear, Collins Aerospace, even the tires come from Michelin. Every critical system is manufactured by companies already approved by European and American aviation regulators. Yet, this aircraft cannot operate international routes. Not because it's unsafe, not because it failed inspections, but because Europe's aviation regulatory body, ESA, recently announced it won't grant certification for another three to six years. That's an extraordinary delay for an aircraft specifically engineered to meet international standards from the ground up. Western media outlets quickly pounced. What's the point? Some headlines mocked. Nobody wants to buy it anyway. But that's not the real story unfolding here. What's actually happening transcends safety checklists and bureaucratic paperwork. This is about power market leverage, and a high-stakes confrontation over who controls the future of commercial aviation. And China's response? It's not what anyone anticipated. Let's establish a fundamental question. Why does certification carry such weight in the aviation industry? In straightforward terms, a type certificate functions like a passport for aircraft. It's an official document issued by a nation's aviation authority stating, yes, this aircraft meets our safety standards and can operate commercially. Without it, the plane cannot fly commercial routes beyond its home country. No certificate means no global flights, no international sales, no viable business model. Here's where the system becomes complicated. In the world of aviation regulation, two organizations dominate the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration in the United States, and ESA the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. These two regulatory bodies wield such influence that most countries worldwide simply adopt their decisions. If an aircraft receives certification from ESA or the FAA, it's automatically accepted by dozens of nations spanning from Brazil to Japan to Australia. China understood this dynamic perfectly. That's why in 2019, Beijing signed a bilateral aviation safety agreement with the European Union. The objective was establishing legal groundwork for mutual recognition. If a Chinese aircraft like the C919 satisfied ESA's standards, theoretically, it should receive certification. China went even further, designing the C919 around internationally recognized, Western manufactured components to ensure it checked every regulatory box. The strategy appeared foolproof, build the aircraft to global standards, use trusted components from established suppliers, follow established protocols, and earn international approval. So the obvious question becomes, why isn't this working? Now let's examine the C919 itself, because this isn't some experimental project assembled hastily in a backroom workshop. This is a commercial jet engineered to meet global standards from inception. Start with propulsion. The C919 uses LEAP 1C engines developed jointly by General Electric from the United States and Safran from France, the exact same engine family powering Airbus's A320neo one of the best-selling commercial aircraft globally. These engines already carry certification from both FAA and ESA, but the Western components extend far beyond propulsion. The C919's flight control systems? Honeywell, the American aerospace giant. Its radar systems? Rockwell Collins, another established U.S. firm. Fuel management systems? Parker Hannafin. Even the tires are manufactured by Michelin. Every single one of these companies is trusted, certified, and possesses decades of experience building aviation systems for Boeing and Airbus aircraft operating worldwide. So here's the paradox creating frustration. If all the components are individually certified, and those components collectively comprise the complete aircraft, why isn't the finished product certified? 
It's kind of analogous to constructing a smartphone entirely from certified components. A Qualcomm processor, Samsung display, Sony camera module, and being told the final device requires years of additional testing just to sell internationally. Not because it's unsafe or poorly designed, but because it wasn't manufactured by Apple or Samsung. That's the source of confusion and growing suspicion. Comac, the Chinese manufacturer, didn't cut corners. They didn't attempt to reinvent fundamental aviation technology. They followed the international regulatory playbook meticulously and are still being told to wait potentially six additional years. And that's beginning to appear less like quality assurance and more like a market barrier. So what's genuinely happening beneath the surface? Officially, ESA states the delay is technical in nature. They maintain that every aircraft, regardless of component sourcing, must be evaluated as an integrated system. And that's accurate, to a point. But expand the perspective and examine the broader pattern. Because this isn't the first time China has followed international protocols, only to discover the rules quietly changing once they become competitive. Consider space cooperation. In 2014, China and the European Union agreed on joint deep space exploration missions. European astronauts actually traveled to China, trained at Chinese facilities, and learned Mandarin in preparation for future assignments aboard China's space station. Then abruptly, in 2023, the European Space Agency withdrew, citing vague political and budgetary concerns. Years of preparation and investment evaporated. Or rewind to the early 2000s when China joined the EU's Galileo Satellite Navigation Program as a partner. China invested substantially and followed the technical development roadmap. But under pressure, primarily from the United States, China was systematically excluded from the project. The result? China constructed its own navigation system. Beidou, which now rivals GPS in capability and coverage. Ironically, Europe's Galileo system still isn't fully operational decades later. This is the recurring pattern. China engages with international systems, follows established rules, makes substantial investments, and then the framework gets reconfigured once Chinese capabilities approach competitiveness. Whether it's satellite navigation, space station collaboration, or now commercial aviation, the message appears consistent. When China becomes genuinely competitive, the competition gets redefined. And here's why this matters profoundly. The global commercial aviation industry functions as a duopoly, split almost entirely between Boeing and Airbus. Together they control approximately 90% of the worldwide market. And now COMAC emerges, backed by the world's second largest economy, with an aircraft that meets all technical requirements. For the first time in decades, that duopoly faces a credible challenge. In that context, the delay in certifying the C919 stops looking neutral or procedural. It begins appearing like protectionism, not about safety standards, but about preserving market dominance. Let's address a narrative popular among Western critics. Who's even going to purchase the C919? Here's the reality they're overlooking. Even without international certification, the C919 already possesses a massive market runway. Start with this data point. China is projected to become the world's largest aviation market by 2042, according to the International Air Transport Association. We're discussing projected demand exceeding 9,000 new aircraft over the coming decades. That represents nearly one quarter of total global demand and COMAC only requires capturing a portion of that domestic market to achieve commercial success. So even if the C919 never operates outside Chinese airspace, it still has a viable future. But the market opportunity extends considerably further. Several Southeast Asian countries, including Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam, have already expressed interest in the C919. Many of these nations participate in China's Belt and Road Initiative and some are willing to recognize Chinese aviation certification standards rather than waiting indefinitely for Western regulatory approval. Meanwhile, consider Airbus. 
the so-called rival that theoretically benefits from this certification delay. China is Airbus's largest single national customer. Since 2006, China has purchased more aircraft from Airbus than from Boeing. Over 2,200 Airbus aircraft currently operate in China, comprising more than half the country's civil aviation fleet. Airbus even manufactures aircraft in China. Its Tianjin assembly facility produces up to six aircraft monthly, directly contributing to the company's global production output. So let's be absolutely clear. If market access becomes reciprocal, if China decides to make international certification a two-way street, Airbus stands to lose just as much, potentially more, than Comac currently faces. In summary, the notion that the C919 lacks potential customers isn't merely misleading. It ignores fundamental market mathematics, and those numbers strongly favor China's position. China isn't passively waiting for Western regulatory approval. It's already implementing alternative strategies. First move, engine independence. Currently, the C919 operates with Leap 1C engines, a collaborative product of General Electric and Safran. But Comac is working with AECC, the Aero Engine Corporation of China, to develop a domestically produced alternative designated the CJ1000A. If successful, that substitution would be transformative. It would eliminate a critical Western component dependency and, more significantly, break the certification chain that currently runs through U.S. and European regulatory bodies. But propulsion independence isn't the only front where China is adapting strategically. COMAC and Chinese aviation regulators are constructing a parallel certification network through diplomatic and commercial engagement. Several Belt and Road partner countries have already signed mutual recognition agreements, meaning Chinese certified aircraft like the C919 could legally operate in those regions without requiring approval from ESA or the FAA. Then there's market leverage, subtle but powerful. China doesn't need to announce dramatic sanctions or import bans to apply pressure. Instead, it can quietly adjust purchasing patterns. Imagine Chinese state-owned airlines beginning to favor Comac over Airbus for domestic route expansion. Or imagine large aircraft orders being delayed until certification timelines align more favorably. No inflammatory headlines, just economic gravity doing its work. It's a gradual but strategic pressure campaign, not driven by revenge, but by necessity. If the established global system excludes you, construct an alternative one. And that's precisely China's trajectory. The C919 represents more than a passenger aircraft. It's a symbol of ambition, resilience, and long-term strategic thinking. Think of Huawei. When cut off from American semiconductor supplies, the company didn't collapse. It doubled down on domestic innovation, eventually launching 5G smartphones with Chinese-designed processors. Or consider Beidou, China's answer to GPS, created after being excluded from Europe's Galileo project. These weren't merely technological achievements. They were strategic statements. And now the C919 is following the identical path. Initially, China attempted integration, playing by the rules of the established global aviation system. It sourced Western components. It followed certification protocols. It signed bilateral agreements. But when regulatory goalposts shifted, China didn't protest loudly or escalate diplomatically. It pivoted. Now it's reconstructing aviation capability from the ground-up engines, electronic systems, certification frameworks, and export markets, building comprehensive independence. The irony? ESA's certification delay may actually accelerate that transformation. By obstructing the C919's international market access, regulators may have inadvertently forced China to develop something more independent and eventually more globally competitive. And this transcends one country's aerospace ambitions. It reflects a new global reality taking shape. The next era of commercial aviation won't be shaped exclusively by Seattle and Toulouse. Shanghai, Tianjin, and Chengdu are joining the manufacturing landscape. Supply chains are diversifying. Regulatory frameworks are multiplying.
Markets are fragmenting along geopolitical lines. So if you're observing this situation thinking, it's just one aircraft, reconsider. The C919 represents just the beginning, and the skies above us are becoming considerably more crowded, more competitive, and more complex. This story illuminates something larger than aviation manufacturing. It reveals how economic competition is evolving in the 21st century, where regulatory authority becomes market leverage, where safety standards can function as trade barriers, and where technological self-sufficiency becomes a strategic imperative rather than a nationalist preference. For decades, the conventional wisdom held that China would gradually integrate into Western-led global systems, adopting established rules and norms. Instead, when those systems proved selectively accessible, China began constructing parallel structures, alternative frameworks that operate according to different principles and serve different markets. The C919 certification impasse is accelerating this bifurcation. Every year of delay strengthens the case within Chinese policy circles for technological independence. Every regulatory obstacle validates the enormous investments being poured into domestic engine development, avionics systems, and alternative certification networks. Western aviation manufacturers and regulators may believe they're protecting market share and maintaining quality standards, but they're simultaneously creating powerful incentives for China to build comprehensive alternatives that could eventually challenge not just individual aircraft models, but the entire architecture of global aviation regulation. The question isn't whether China will eventually certify the C919 through EASA or FAA approval. The question is whether, by the time that certification potentially arrives, it will still matter, or whether China will have constructed an entirely separate aviation ecosystem that no longer requires Western validation to succeed commercially. That's the real story unfolding here. Not one delayed aircraft, but the potential fragmentation of global aviation into competing spheres of influence, each with its own standards, supply chains, and market networks. And if history offers any guidance, from semiconductors to telecommunications to satellite navigation, once China commits to building domestic alternatives at scale, the results tend to surprise those who dismiss the possibility. The C919 might be grounded internationally today, but the infrastructure being built around it, the engines, the systems, the partnerships, the alternative certification frameworks, is taking flight in ways that will reshape commercial aviation for decades to come. The skies are indeed getting more crowded. And the question facing the established aviation industry isn't whether China will eventually compete globally. It's whether the delay in recognition will cost more than the protection it was meant to provide.